I was surprised how many people want to use the tool for my last video, so I jumped into working on the first release right away. While I'm putting together the first version, I'll show you a few tools I didn't cover last time. Let's get into it. I'll start with the Gabion walls, as I was really happy I got this one working so well. The group starts by smoothing the input curve and capturing the necessary attributes. I shrink wrap the curve and then, based on the distance from the input terrain object, I duplicate the points. These are distributed according to the block dimensions and curve attributes. After that, I unwrap the blocks and instance them onto the points. It really works better than I expected. By tilting the points or changing their radius, I can now adjust each part independently. I actually painted in all the walls before realizing I could control the slope using the curve tilt, so there are gaps in a lot of places, and I'll probably rework them all using the new tool. The line tool uses a basic mesh line as input, with points assigned to vertex groups based on the desired type of line. I can control the width of the line and the length of the dashed segments. In the end, the mesh is shrink-wrapped onto the selected surface. I also created another tool to help with areas that have striped markings. First, I take the mesh, move it down, and extrude it up to prepare one part for the boolean. Then I use a bounding box to generate a curve, which I resample and rotate based on input values. After that, I instance the stripes and use them as the second part for the boolean node set to intersect. Shrink wrap everything, and it's done. I also made some updates to the road group to create a smoother curve. After testing the first version, people noticed bumps and sudden elevation changes throughout the track. I tried to locate the problem areas in Blender, but with the scale of the whole track, I wasn't very successful. I asked people on Discord to mark the spots while driving. After receiving this image and going through the track again, I started seeing a pattern. My subdivision base smoothing wasn't working well in areas where the input points were too close together. I reworked the node tree and made a new group that averages the Z position of the points and smooths the curve. After testing, this seems to fix the issue, at least for now. I've also added a camber option for the road which is controlled by the curve tilt. I updated the other groups as well so that everything reacts properly to the change. In the trees group, I added an option to switch between visible points and a hidden point cloud used for export. There's also a third option to instance actual objects in case you need visible trees instead of just points. I also included a setting to delete points that are too far from the track. This makes it possible to use high poly trees close to the road while keeping distant trees lower quality to save performance. Right now I'm going through all the tools and getting everything ready for release. Once it's done, I'll make another video that walks through the whole system from the user's point of view. No nodes, just the inputs and how to use them. Thanks for watching. Let me know if there's a feature you'd like to see in the next versions.